and this is the fifth in a series of videos about searching for the perfect yacht. Meet me under the pale moonlight at the end of the dock in the middle of the night. Sail away with the seagulls on the high tide. Sitting in one place too long, we're growing seaweed out of this tired old song. We're all right, but I think it's time we got go. A gentle swell lifts our bow as we head east from Reatea. FPB 781 Cochise is fully bunkered, having just topped off the diesel tanks. Our goal is to make the 4,700 nautical miles from Reatea to Panama without stopping for fuel, something no other small power yacht has ever done. It's hard to imagine but Cochise was launched in New Zealand just four months ago, and it's only been two weeks since we were in Fiji testing systems in the tropical climate. We were having dinner at Tata's in Denarel, Fiji, with cruising friends we'd met 40 years ago in Fatuhiva. The moon was almost full, and we were chatting with Jim and Cheryl Schmidt about the old days. Back when we were cruising westward together, conversations frequently turned to the perfect cruising yacht. By the time we had reached New Zealand, these dreams had solidified and were the genesis for our first Deerfoot series. Jim and Cheryl had the second boat out of the molds. They were with us for sea trials on the 62-foot Intermezzo II, the 68-foot Sun Deer, and the 78-foot Beowulf. As came to be our custom, they helped us break in the 83-foot FPB prototype, Wind Horse. Fiji is a gathering place for serious cruisers. It is one of those wonderful destinations where friends you haven't seen for months or years will often be found. Cochise is the first yacht we have built where crew is a consideration in the design. Between this and the upwind comfort, there is a new level of flexibility, and we are exploring the options. New Zealander Steve Parsons has been helping during sea trials. Our testing so far has gone well, so we're going to try an upwind voyage. We are headed out the pass at cloud break, bound towards French Polynesia. 2,000 nautical miles upwind to the east. It is backwards, against the trade wind and currents, and it is what Cochise is designed to do. Along this route, we are going to show you some of the loveliest cruising locations on the planet and tell a few sea stories from the old days. You will get a first-hand look at how we and Cochise handle this passage as well as learn with us how the interior works at sea. The first leg takes us along the barrier reef of Vitu Livu and then through the Benga Channel. Threading our way east between the atolls of the Lao group is relatively easy these days, with electronic charts, Google Earth images, and powerful radar. But in 1977, when we were heading west through the Lao group from Tonga, it was a different story. We are aboard the 50-foot catch in Intermezzo, running at night, in 30 knots of breeze with the jib pulled out in intermittent overcast when we came within a minute of parking ourselves on Horseshoe Reef. Because Steve was on deck, he saw the breakers in time to jibe the boat and head us back into the wind. We are back aboard Cochise now. The Matrix deck is our favorite place to keep watch and to relax. It is ideal when navigation is challenging. There are four large TV screens easily changed to best suit the present navigation mode. We've been fine-tuning the matrix deck as we have learned more about Cochise and what we need to operate her efficiently. Most of the furniture can be moved and there are provisions for securing varying layouts at sea. 
The console has been through eight different mock-ups before it came to this one. Either helm seat can control all functions if just one of us is on watch, or it works when we are conning as a team, when on soundings, splitting control between the two of us. The large touch screen on the port side is really easy to use. And the angled footrest is a small but important detail. The back window can be rolled up, incorporating the porch into the ambiance of the matrix deck. Blue sky, blue waves, blue eyes, sweet day. I'm just cruising. On every long passage, there comes a point where routine, coupled with an absence of man-made stimuli, allows you to absorb the natural beauty that surrounds us. So long to the restless, stressful life. I'm just cruising. Palmerston, an open ocean atoll which we have passed on three previous occasions. Given the clear weather we have right now, we're going in to take a look. We've been at sea for a week now, heading uphill from Fiji to French Polynesia. We're about to make our landfall at Reate in a couple of hours. This is our fourth visit to Reatea, one of our favorite islands in this part of the world, a port of entry that allows us to avoid the big city of Papiete. Eyeball navigation from the Matrix deck is a pleasure. We are protected from the sun, have good airflow to keep us cool, and most importantly, have excellent sight lines with sufficient height for reef detection in a wide range of sun angles. Our original plan was to spend some time in this part of the world before heading on, and we are as comfortable at sea as we are at anchor. The challenge of getting from Reatea to Panama without refueling has taken hold. We're going to top off the fuel tanks, have a dinner ashore, check over the engine room, and head to Panama. The convenience store associated with the fuel dock has a wonderful supply of heavy-duty fishing gear, the likes of which we could not find in Fiji or New Zealand. Heading out the pads for pads. So here we are at the start of our little jaunt to the east and just checking out the town of Fare. Huahini is the least developed of the Society Islands, the kind of location where you could quite easily spend a month. There are also several good surfing spots along the barrier reef. The distance to Panama from Reatea is 4,632 nautical miles. We need to allow for a knot of west flowing current plus a bit of distance chasing areas of lighter wind and counter current. This brings us to 5,300 nautical miles. We want a 15% safety factor for a total budgeted distance of 6,000 nautical miles. Cochise carries 4,700 usable gallons of diesel fuel, which allows 8 tenths of a gallon per nautical mile. This is in line with what we burn with 20 knots of wind on the nose at 10 knots of boat speed. Assuming conditions remain moderate for the next 900 miles, we will bypass topping up in the Marquesas Islands. First, we have to work our way through the Tuamotos. We plan to hit the initial tight area in daylight. 
Clouds and often squalls will be found over the warm waters of shallow lagoons. The green color of the water is reflected on the underside of the clouds, as you can see in this photo. In clear conditions, the surf on the surrounding reef is visible at four to 10 miles on radar, and even at night with the moon obscured, if there's a sea running, the break will be visible at a mile or more. Where this becomes dicey is when approaching the lee side of an atoll where there is no surf or in a calm sea. How about a tour of the Great Room? This has been a feature of all of our yachts since the early 1980s. The Great Room is a combination living room, entertainment center, galley, and helm. There are good sight lines around the boat, and you can see the nav data on the TV from anywhere in the room. A second person can sleep on one of the settees, so they're handy for the watch to call if needed. The TV is on a lift for movies at anchor, although we rarely use it this way. The furniture holds you in place aft and forward. There are removable staple rails to break up the floor. The main control panel forms an alcove that isolates its lighting from the forward helm. You can work in the galley without major light impact on forward visibility. We are through the Tuamotos and it's clear sailing from here to Panama. If you don't count the squalls, radar can be a very helpful tool in estimating squall strength. The intense portion of this squall is developing behind us, and if we alter course a bit to port, we will probably miss the majority of the effects from the squall off our bow. Coffee flavored soy milk. Nothing like it when I watch. Sun's just barely getting ready to come up. We're uh, half a day out of the Marquesas Islands. Looking to go close by Fatuhiba, one of the most beautiful islands in the world. And we have this wonderful, massive line squall. Not to give us a good rinse. Not if there's any salt water on deck. We've had a whole bunch of these squalls keeping us nice and clean. After all of these years of voyaging, it's still a thrill for us to make a landfall, especially when it's Fatuhiba. On our first visit in 1977, the deal on board was that Steve cleaned the big fish and the girls and I the little ones. We were taking this small fish ashore to dismember and carve into people-sized chunks. The majority of it ended up in the village, earning us the gratitude of the entire population. When we left for the Tuamotos, the dinghy was filled with gifts of oranges, bananas, and delicious Marquesan grapefruit. We passed these along to our fruitless friends in the Tuamotos. This footage is from our visit in 1995 aboard Beowulf. Everything in the engine room checks out okay. We've eaten a surfeit of pomplamoose and verified our fuel calculations for the final leg. The challenge from here on is whether or not we can maintain a 9.75 knot average to Panama. This is the first chance we've had to finish bringing our meat lines, and off the north end of Fatuhiva we get two quick strikes. Whoa, look at that. Some of the mahi mahi. Yeah. Let me 
half deck to the galley. Guess where that's going. The solar array covers our daytime power requirements. In the tropics, we produce between 20 and 30 kilowatt hours daily. This saves us roughly four gallons of diesel per day. That doesn't sound like a lot, but between Rayate and Panama, this represents between 80 and 150 miles of additional range, depending on boat speed and weather. In the past few days, we've crossed the equator, which happens slowly when you're going east to west. We celebrated a birthday on board with homemade apricot tart and whipped cream and rinse the boat with several good squalls a day. We've been making good use of our Kindles, playing some cards, doing a bit of writing and photography, and generally relaxing. Except for when we learned, much to our chagrin, that birds of a feather poop and make one hell of a mess together. At 0900 this morning, we have covered two-thirds of the trip between Fiji and Panama. There are just under 2,000 nautical miles to go. Since Reyatea, we have averaged 9.5 knots speed over ground, burning just under 9 tenths of a gallon per nautical mile. During this period, boat speed has varied from 7.5 to 11.5 knots, depending on current. So far, this is the easiest and most comfortable long passage we have experienced. Although we're not used to having an extra set of hands on board, having Steve Parsons with us has made our sleep cycles infinitely better. The great room layout allows the person on watch to help in the galley and for us to eat our main meals together, the communal consumption of which we all enjoy. This osprey would be common in most of North America, but right now the coast is almost a thousand miles to the east and the Galapagos are several hundred miles south. This land bird does not belong with us. He spends two hours resting and then heads off to the northeast. Give you a quick look at the electronics in the gray room where we just watched a daytime movie, something we've never done before, but it works out really well. Data monitoring system in 2K. Basic electronics. Still keep a paper log. And over there is a paper report each watch on the fuel system. The staterooms are located in the most comfortable position on the boat, making it easy to sleep in even the most adverse conditions. The master stateroom has a wonderful ambiance and openness. Yet between the furniture and the handrails, the layout holds you in place at sea. The double doors can be closed for privacy, partially opened, or fully opened, incorporating the hallway into the visual space. There are aft cabins, each with a head, sink, and shower. The forepeak is my laundry room and pantry. The natural rotation of the ocean currents in the Pacific in the tropics is west going. However, we were able to use Cochise's speed and efficiency to search out the equatorial countercurrent, which occasionally gave us as much as two knots positive push. We estimate that net for the journey, we lost 20 miles a day to currents. Welcome to Panama, folks. One of the more active mining areas in the cruising world. We have been following a sail, or rather it's been following us, coming into the canal area. Getting some good still photographs with our lightning triggers. But it's gotten a little bit active, and uh, you can see the radar screen, but we're taking a right angle jog, speeding up a little bit, and see if we can you know, get ourselves out of this lightning zone. Yeah, I'd say that was close. <laughs> Over the last several days, we have had periods of favorable winds and currents, akin to what we would experience in a traditional trade wind passage. Running at 13 and a half knots, we were burning 10.8 gallons an hour, dropping to 5.7 gallons an hour at 10 and a half knots. 
10,000 nautical miles have passed under Cochise's hull in the five months since she was launched, and we are about to make contact with Flamenco Island Radio, approach control for this side of Panama. For this leg, we averaged 9.996 knots, speed over ground, burning 0.866 gallons per nautical mile. This fuel burn covers hydraulic and electric power, as well as propulsion. Given the fuel left in our tanks, we have an effective range of 5,500 nautical miles going uphill against a current like this. Cochise has accomplished this passage for the most part directly into the wind and against the current. She has kept her crew, just three of us, rested and comfortable to the point that we have thoroughly enjoyed the experience. After 28 days at sea and two brief stops, we're not yet ready to end this voyage. So, Captain Skip, how do you feel? I'm feeling good. <laughs> Looking good. It's hard to believe that it was five months ago, almost to the day we launched this boat. We would be in Panama 10,000 nautical miles later, or 9,999. Come on in, share with me. Whisper your story. So yeah, whatever it is that you can't keep in, what treasures you had to tell. Still, it's okay if you won't. Do you?